What's up, hackers? Welcome back to. Today, we're counting down the top 10 hacking skills every hacker should know. Whether you're a beginner just starting out in the world of cybersecurity or a seasoned pro looking to brush up on your skills, these techniques are absolutely essential to level up your game. We're going to dive deep into the nitty gritty of each skill, giving you the knowledge you need to truly understand how these exploits work. So buckle up, grab your favorite energy drink, and let's dive in. All right, coming in at number one, the king of the hill, the big cheese binary exploitation. This is where the real hardcore hacking happens, folks. We're talking about diving deep into the ones and zeros of a program, understanding its fundamental building blocks, and finding those tiny cracks, those little vulnerabilities that we can pry open to make the program dance to our tune. Think of it like reverse engineering a complex machine, figuring out its blueprints, and then tweaking it to do something it wasn't originally designed to do. This is not for the faint of heart. This is where your assembly language knowledge comes into play, where you need to understand how programs interact with the operating system at the lowest level. It's like being a digital mechanic, but instead of fixing cars, you're taking control of them, making them do your bidding. This is where the magic happens, where you turn from a script kitty to a true master of the digital domain. Learning binary exploitation is like gaining a superpower. It gives you the ability to see through the matrix, to manipulate the fabric of reality at the code level. It's a powerful skill and with great power comes great responsibility. So remember to use your newfound knowledge for good, for ethical hacking, for making the digital world a safer place. At number two, we have fuzz testing. This is like being a digital demolition derby driver, but instead of crashing cars, you're crashing programs. You're essentially throwing a barrage of random data at a piece of software, trying to make it break, to make it reveal its weaknesses. It's like stress testing a bridge by driving a thousand trucks over it at once. You want to see where it cracks, where it buckles, where it fails. Why do we do this? Because software is complex, there are millions of lines of code and it's almost impossible to catch every single bug, every single vulnerability during development. So we fuzz it, we bombard it with chaos, and we see what happens. It's like playing digital whack-a-mole, but instead of moles, you're whacking bugs. And trust me, there are always more bugs lurking beneath the surface just waiting to be discovered. The beauty of fuzzing is that it's relatively simple to do, you don't need to be a coding wizard to get started. There are plenty of open source fuzzing tools available that can help you automate the process. You just point them at your target, feed them some sample data, and let them loose. It's like having a digital army of monkeys hammering away at your software trying to find those hidden flaws. Coming in at number three is exploit development. This is where you get to be a digital blacksmith, forging your own tools of the trade. You found a vulnerability, you fuzzed it, you understand how it works, now it's time to build an exploit, a piece of code that takes advantage of that weakness. Think of it like crafting a key that fits perfectly into a lock, a key that unlocks the door to the system you're targeting. This is where your creativity comes into play, where you need to think outside the box, to come up with clever ways to bypass security measures and gain control of the target system. It's like playing a game of chess, but instead of moving pieces on a board, you're moving bits and bytes in a computer. You need to anticipate your opponent's moves, to think several steps ahead, to create an exploit that's both effective and undetectable. Exploit development is a constantly evolving field, as new vulnerabilities are discovered and new defenses are put in place. It's a never-ending arms race between attackers and defenders, and the only way to stay ahead is to keep learning, to keep experimenting, to keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. At number four, we have post-exploitation techniques. So you've popped a box, you've gained access to a system, now what? This is where post-exploitation comes into play. The art of maintaining access, of escalating privileges, of moving laterally within a network. Think of it like infiltrating a castle. You've breached the outer wall, but now you need to find the treasure room. You need to seize control of the entire fortress. This is where your stealth skills come into play where you need to be like a digital ninja moving silently through the network, leaving no trace, covering your tracks. You need to understand how to blend in, how to use existing tools and services to your advantage, how to make it look like you belong there. It's like being a ghost in the machine, unseen, unheard, but always in control. 
Post-exploitation is all about maximizing your gains, about squeezing every last drop of information and control from the compromised system. It's about setting up back doors, installing rootkits, creating hidden tunnels, turning the system into your own personal playground. It's the difference between a smash and grab and a long con, a delicate dance between control and stealth. Coming in at number five is social engineering. This is where we leave the digital realm and enter the human one, the art of manipulating people, of playing on their emotions, their trust, their weaknesses. Think of it like being a digital con artist, a master of persuasion, a weaver of illusions. You're not hacking computers, you're hacking people, using their own psychology against them. This is where your communication skills come into play, where you need to be charming, charismatic, believable. You need to understand how to build rapport, how to elicit information, how to make people do what you want without them even realizing it. It's like being a stage magician, but instead of pulling rabbits out of hats, you're pulling passwords out of people's minds. Social engineering is a powerful tool and it can be used for good or evil. It can be used to raise awareness about security vulnerabilities, to educate people about the importance of protecting their information, or it can be used to steal identities, to defraud companies, to wreak havoc in the digital world. The choice is yours, but remember, with great power comes great responsibility. At number six, we have reverse engineering. This is like being a digital archaeologist, digging through the layers of a program, trying to understand how it was built, how it works. You're taking something apart, piece by piece, analyzing its components, its structure, its logic. It's like dissecting a frog, but instead of a scalpel, you're using a debugger, a disassembler, a hex editor. Why do we reverse engineer? Because sometimes you need to understand how something works in order to fix it, to improve it, or to exploit it. It's like taking apart a clock to figure out why it's ticking, or taking apart a car engine to figure out how to make it run faster. You're looking for the hidden mechanisms, the secret sauce, the underlying principles that make the whole thing tick. Reverse engineering is a challenging but rewarding skill. It requires patience, attention to detail, and a willingness to get your hands dirty. You're going to be spending a lot of time staring at assembly code, debugging cryptic error messages, and piecing together fragments of information. But the feeling of finally cracking the code, of understanding how something works at its core, is incredibly satisfying. It's like solving a complex puzzle, a mental workout that leaves you feeling sharper and more knowledgeable. Coming in at number 7 we have Privilege Escalation. So you've gained a foothold on a system but you're stuck with limited access. Just like a guest in a mansion you can wander the halls but you can't open the locked doors. You can't access the real treasures. Privilege escalation is the art of picking those locks, of gaining the keys to the kingdom, of becoming the administrator, the root user, the god of the digital domain. This is where your knowledge of operating systems comes into play, where you need to understand how permissions work, how users and groups are managed, how security policies are enforced. You're looking for weaknesses in the system's design, for loopholes in the implementation, for any opportunity to elevate your privileges. It's like climbing the social ladder, but instead of networking and schmoozing, you're exploiting vulnerabilities and bypassing security checks. Privilege escalation is a crucial skill for any serious hacker. It's the difference between reading someone's emails and controlling their entire computer, between browsing a website and taking down a server. It's the key to unlocking the full potential of a compromised system to turning a minor intrusion into a major security breach. At number eight, we have buffer overflow exploitation. This is a classic hacking technique, a tried and true method for taking control of a system. It's like stuffing too much food into a container. It's going to spill over. It's going to make a mess. In this case, the container is a buffer, a temporary storage area in memory, and the food is data, more data than the buffer can handle. When a buffer overflows, it can overwrite adjacent memory locations, potentially corrupting data, crashing the program, or even allowing an attacker to execute arbitrary code. Think of it like a water pipe bursting, flooding the surrounding area, causing chaos and destruction. In the digital world, that chaos can be exploited to gain control of the system. Buffer overflow exploits are often used to inject malicious code into a system, code that can give an attacker a backdoor, a rootkit, or complete control over the compromised machine. It's a powerful technique and it's still relevant today, despite decades of research and mitigation efforts. 
Coming in at number 9, we have Network Protocol Analysis. This is like being a digital detective, listening in on conversations, intercepting messages, decoding secrets. You're diving into the world of network protocols, the languages that computers use to communicate with each other. It's like learning a foreign language, but instead of words, you're learning packets, frames, segments, datagrams. Why do we analyze network protocols? Because that's where the action happens, that's where data flows, that's where vulnerabilities are exposed. By understanding how network protocols work, you can identify weaknesses, intercept sensitive information, and even manipulate traffic to your advantage. It's like tapping a phone line, but instead of listening to voices, you're reading data packets. Network protocol analysis is an essential skill for any security professional. It allows you to see what's happening on your network, to detect intrusions, to troubleshoot connectivity problems, and to ensure the overall security of your digital infrastructure. And finally, at number 10, we have Web Application Exploitation. This is the bread and butter of modern hacking, the art of finding and exploiting vulnerabilities in web applications. It's like being a digital burglar, casing a house, looking for weak points, for open windows, for unlocked doors. In this case, the house is a web application and the treasures are user data, sensitive information and system access. Web applications are everywhere, from online banking to social media to e-commerce and they're constantly under attack. Attackers are looking for vulnerabilities like SQL injection, cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery, flaws that can allow them to steal data, hijack accounts, and even take control of servers. It's like finding a crack in a dam, a small leak that can eventually lead to a catastrophic failure. Web application exploitation is a constantly evolving field, as new vulnerabilities are discovered and new defenses are put in place. It's a never-ending arms race between attackers and defenders, and the only way to stay ahead is to keep learning, to keep experimenting, to keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And there you have it, folks. The top 10 hacking skills every hacker should know. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, mastering these skills will help you take your hacking game to the next level. Remember, these are just the tip of the iceberg, the starting point for your journey into the world of cybersecurity. There's always more to learn, more to explore, more to master. Remember, hacking is all about continuous learning and improvement. Stay curious, stay hungry, and always keep practicing. The more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know. So stay humble, stay ethical, and use your knowledge for good. Hack the planet.